All right. We're live. How's it going today, everybody? Welcome to my channel. This is Bruce with Traveling with Bruce. You made it to the 5 o'clock uh, p.m. show live on YouTube. Woohoo! Uh, March the 21st, Wednesday. March 21st, 2018. Welcome to the uh, 5 p.m. broadcast. Uh, how you guys doing? Uh, having a good day? Um, I'm doing okay. Uh, not complaining. Uh, weather here, pretty good here in Creston, B.C. For those of you who don't know where I am, located in Creston, British Columbia, about three miles north of the U.S. border. I can see uh, Idaho from my uh, living room, just out the, right out the window here. America today? Looking great, looking great. We hit about 48 degrees today. We were sunny for most of the day until about, oh, about 20 minutes ago. We got these afternoon clouds rolling through. Uh, but uh, the snow is up in the mountains and down here where I'm in the valley, it's beautiful. Green, uh, the evergreens look great. The grass is kind of wondering, should, should we should we, you know, should we grow now? Or is, is this it? Or is it, are you hitting me one more time? Uh, birds everywhere, so, you know, spring's in the air. Um, yeah, we'll see how it goes. <laughs> the channel's doing great. Uh, my YouTube channel's just humming along. For those of you who've never been here before, if you're a first timer, welcome to this channel, Traveling with Bruce. Here at this channel, we like to talk about cruise ships, going on cruise ship vacations, getting a good deal for a cruise, uh, keeping up with all the changes in the cruise world, of uh, which there are plenty at all times. Um, I think we're now following over 300 cruise ships. Um, that are you know being operated by the major cruise lines and medium-sized cruise lines around the planet. Um, twenty-seven are being built. Well, actually, yeah, I think twenty-seven are being delivered this year, two thousand eighteen. Twenty-seven new cruise ships being delivered this year to the cruise lines, um, all with their unique um, characteristics and amenities and uh, add-ons and all this stuff. And then, uh, oh gosh, I think there's 120 ships ordered going forward for the next eight years already. Uh, it's it's unbelievable. The business is growing dramatically globally, although there are problems in China right now. I'll talk about that a little bit uh, today. Um, but uh, yeah, all in all, man, it's crazy. North Americans are the number one cruisers in the world as far as numbers go. Uh, Miami is the number one port for uh, for comings and goings. Um, more tourists um, travel in and out of Miami than any other port on earth uh, for the cruise ship business. And uh, Fort Lauderdale, of course, is right up there. Um, port Canaveral in Florida is expanding bigly, uh, to quote somebody in the White House. Uh, they're going uh, something like, uh, they're pouring 2.5 billion into the development and expansion of the Port of Canaveral and the surrounding area. Uh, over the next few years. It, it is a massive, massive investment. Ports around the world are investing millions of dollars into enhanced facilities to attract cruise lines uh, to come and visit, uh, to try to attract cruise lines to consider making these ports a home port where a cruise will start and end from, because that is a lot of business. Uh, if you can, you can secure cruise ships to call your town a home port, woohoo, that's big money big money. Uh, and so there's a lot of competition going on globally for that. Um, yeah, a lot of debate in the Northeast US right now. Um, a lot of uh, smaller cities uh, up and down the uh, Northeastern seaboard. They know that during the summer and the fall, they are a popular place to visit because of the beautiful area up there, the great weather. And then in the fall, the incredible colors with the leaves changing color. Uh, there's a huge debate between some who want more cruise ships to come to town and those who don't want any coming to town because they moved there for the tranquility, for the beauty, for the laid back lifestyle. And now hordes of tourists are coming in on cruise ships for like six hours, eight hours, you know, a day. And some towns want to have a cruise ship every day. Some towns don't want a cruise ship ever. And it is a it is a big struggle back and forth go the arguments. And uh, yeah. There's that. That's going on too. So that's the kind of channel we have here. If you're new, uh, you can sign in like my gang is here. Uh, say hi to me. I'd uh, love to hear from you. Where are you watching me from? What's your temperature today? Uh, you'll probably be warmer than I am if you're south of me. Um, tell me if you're a new, new to the channel. If, you, if this is your first time here, let us know. Oh, the gang here will say hi to you. 
all my regular viewers, uh, I have a bunch who come in every day and say hi to me, and uh, we converse back and forth, compare notes. And you can ask me any question you want. If you're a newbie or you're a veteran, you hear something that's going on, you can ask me anything you want about the cruise business. If I can answer it, I'll answer it right away. If I can't, maybe one of my viewers, I'm pointing at my cell phone right away, maybe one of my viewers over here can, and we'll, uh, we'll try to answer the question for you um, right on the spot. Um, usually, uh, usually we can or at least we, we think we can. <laughs> so uh, fantastic. Uh, the channel uh, growing as usual. Um, yesterday when I left the air, we had 1,385 subscribers, 1,385. And now we're at 1,396, four away from 1,400. I wonder if it's going to happen on this show. I wonder if the 1,400 subscriber is going to join the channel right here while we're live. If you would like to become a subscriber to this channel, and it's free to subscribe, Love to have you. There's a subscribe button here. There's another one over there. Just click on the subscribe button that you can find. Uh, if you click on this one over here, I get my thumb right. There's a, uh, I think there's a bell icon beside it. You click on that, uh, you'll be notified every time I do an update on uh, on my channel, a video, uh, another live stream, uh, whatever I'm up to. And uh, no cost to you. It's free to watch. So uh, love to have you on board. We bring in four today. We've got 1,400. Uh, wow. Uh, to give you an idea how fast this channel is growing, uh, it's probably the fastest growing channel on YouTube for cruise ship travel information and discussion. Uh, I don't think anyone uh, does more live streams than I do on a weekly basis. I, I do eight shows a week, eight. Uh, Monday to Friday, uh, I do seven every day at 5 p.m., Monday to Friday. And then on Tuesdays and Thursdays, I do a second show at 8 p.m., Saturdays at 2 p.m. And for now, that's kind of my schedule. We'll, we'll see how much longer I can keep up the pace. <laughs> but it sure is a lot of fun. Eight live streams uh, a week, and uh, no one does that. No one else. And um, we were at uh, 100 viewers in early December. We were at 200 viewers at the beginning of the new year. Uh, we were at um, 275 subscribers around the 17th of January when uh, YouTube lowered the boom on small channels. And uh, here we are, the 21st of March, just a little over two months later, from 275, 1396. That is, that is serious growth. And it's real. Uh, it is actual subscribers who want to watch that are subscribers. These aren't fake. I don't do sub for sub or anything like that. Uh, so I love it. I'm just thrilled and I'm honored to have all of you here. I love the fact that a bunch of you are watching every day, uh, being discovered every day by a bunch of new people. Uh, over 70% of all the uh, watch time on my channel, which is now 1.2 million minutes, it's growing phenomenally. Uh, the watch time, 70% uh, or more, is from people who are not subscribers. They're finding me for the first time. Uh, I think on a daily basis, um, about 14 to 1,500 views on my channel are from people who are not subscribers. The remaining five, six, 700 are subscribers. They, they come in and watch this show live or they watch this show later tonight on the rerun uh and then they catch a couple of videos i've done in the past but the remainder of all the views are from folks who are not subscribers they're finding out about me they're doing search uh, they're doing a search on youtube or on google and a, su a suggestion came up for whatever they were looking for one of my videos popped up in front of them and they clicked on it and uh that's how people are finding me it's fantastic although i will say a lot of my existing subscribers have been instrumental in helping me grow my channel because they have been passing the word out to their friends, uh, their buddies at work, uh, relatives, buddies, you name it. Uh, and a lot of you folks, and I have to thank you again, um, you are sharing my videos on, you, on Facebook. You're sharing my videos um, on uh, Twitter. You're retweeting some of my tweets, which is great. Uh, and I love it. I, 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 I take it all because any kind of social um, platform sharing that this channel can get, it's free advertising to the masses. And uh, you just never know, uh, you know, it gets shared to one to, to another. One other person gets it. They look at the channel. Oh, this is a great channel. I become a subscriber. And then they start sharing to their network. And out we go, out we go, out we go. It's kind of like a fisherman at sea. Uh, but instead of having one line, you got you got fishermen all around the boat in all directions casting lines out trying to catch more viewers and that's what's happening with this channel and i thank all of you for all of your help and assistance encouragement thumbs ups and everything else speaking of thumbs ups uh there's just below this picture there's a probably an icon that looks like this or this 
how are this? <laughs> I hate giving thumbs down. So uh, if you can spare a thumbs up, uh, those are free to hand out on your end. Uh, please do give me thumbs ups if you can spare it. If you like what you're seeing here, this helps my my video. This video get bumped up in the analytics in the YouTube analytics. Uh, and I want to thank a bunch of you guys who have been out there uh, watching a bunch of my videos and giving me thumbs ups all over the place. I really appreciate that too. So. Without any further ado, let's say hi to who's here and find out uh, what's on people's minds, if any of them have questions already. And uh, I've got a few items to talk about today, and let's get going with the show. Enough of the preliminaries. Uh, who started off this whole thing? Uh, Richard Karmaski was first. Two minutes before I went on the air, he was already telling me, uh, saying hi to me, uh, blizzard conditions in Philly, 32 degrees, and, he, and they're getting hit again in the Northeast. Unbelievable. Peter Heckham was here. Uh, how, you, how you doing there, Peter? Hi, Bruce. Uh, 68 degrees in Tarpon Springs, Florida today. Lots of sun. A uh, bit windy. Uh, back up into the 80s by the weekend. Oh, yeah. Uh, we're going to be looking forward to getting some beach time on Saturday. Giddy up. Nice going. All right. Um, Steve Bartley, Norwegian Cruise Line, raised its gratuities to $14.50 per person per day. Uh, they are all doing it. They're all bumping them up about a buck or so. Wes Morrison, 76 and sunny here in New Braunfels, Texas. Richard Karmaski, I heard Princess is going to raise their tips also. Uh, wouldn't surprise me being uh, that um, I think Carnival, I'm not sure if Carnival's done it already, but um, All in America may have done it earlier this year already. Uh, it'll all, you know, they all go up about a dollar a year. Uh, no, no real surprise there. Betsy Lane, hello. Hi, Betsy. Uh, plus three in Hamilton. Uh, that's where she's located. Uh, Tina Old is here. Or o o Od Odell. Od Odlay. Odell. I'm going to say Odell. <laughs> Tina, hi. I'm going to say Tina. I give up. 30s and flurries in Raleigh, North, the, North Carolina today. North Carolina in Raleigh. Uh, 30 of flurries. That's just not right. It's just, that's not, that, that's not the North Carolinian way. That's just, that's just wrong. But it is what it is. It is winter. Charles Jordan. Good evening, Bruce. Charles, how are you, buddy? Wendy Thompson. Hi, everyone. 50 in uh, Bland, Missouri. Sunny. No snow, no rain. Okay. No snow, no rain, but sun. Okay. We'll take that. Peter Heckema just saying uh, here, uh, just wondering, if you pay the tips up front when booking your cruise, how much does, does the staff actually get or is some of it siphoned off. Now, there's no, there's no, um, there's nowhere I know where to go uh, to find the true story. But I do know personally uh, an individual that worked on cruise ships. Uh, he was uh, one of the dancers. Uh, if you ever saw the Saturday Night Live skit with uh, <laughs> with Justin Timberlake, were one of the dancers. Well, he was one of the dancers, and um, great guy he was on Princess for. Boy, I think he was on Princess for six or oh, longer, maybe eight years. Met his wife uh, on the second year or third year of his uh, contract. Met this gal. And, oh, they hit it off. And uh, they began to coordinate their contracts together. And uh, uh, finished, uh, you know, I could say six, eight years after he, he started, he was done. And she and he retired from the cruise game together. Uh, now live in the UK together and just got married and now they're expecting. Oh my gosh. So things are happening at light speed there. Very exciting. Anyway, I had the pleasure, I've had the pleasure to talk to him on occasion about what life is like behind the curtain and down below decks where we don't get to go unless we get a tour. And uh, I asked him about the tip thing some a couple of times and I said, what do you, what do you, you know, how does it work? And he said, well, he said the ship doesn't, the, the cruise line doesn't take any of the dough. Now, let's be fair to the cruise line. They do collect all the money for tipping through the gratuity charge that is charged to our room. And all of us, I, you know, I would have to say 99.8% of us, we pay that bill at the end of our cruise. If we have a bill at the end of the cruise, we pay that with our credit card that we've put on file, you know, when we checked in in the first place. A lot of us, me included, uh, I prepay my tips before I even get on the ship when I'm checking in online and, and booking my cruise in the first place. And I pay over the phone or on, on the internet with a credit card. So there are credit card fees uh, involved for the cruise line to collect. There are currency fees involved for the cruise line to collect as well, because I'm a Canadian paying in Canadian dollars to an American-based a cruise, let's say, out of Miami or out of Los Angeles, and so it's in U.S. dollars. They're charging me 
a conversion rate. So there's there's fees involved for the cruise line to collect the dough. All right, that's fair. Um, they they pull it all up, and uh, I'm not sure if it works. I, I'm pretty sure it works on a per ship per cruise basis. But do the staff get an actual printout uh, of of their tips? Do they get a statement at the end of the month? Maybe. Uh, do they get one once in a while? I I don't know that. And what the splits are, I don't know that either. Um, but the cruise lines have always maintained their their standard um, description of this gratuity that it, it is a suggested gratuity for the benefit of the staff that covers a wide swath of people, a lot of which we never get to see. Uh, these are folks that are actually working down below and they're getting a subsidy on top of their wage and room and board, which is this, this tip cash flow that's coming through. And it's pretty consistent, although we've talked about this on this channel for you, for you newbies, for you new guys uh, who are watching. Uh, we talk about tipping all the time, and um, it, we really it, it bothers most of us as cruisers uh, on the second last day of a cruise when we're you know kind of heading back to wherever we started from, uh, knowing that tomorrow morning, we all have to get off the ship. Um, during the day and the evening, the night before we tuck in for the last time, there are people standing in line at the uh, guest services desk, and they're looking to reduce their tips. They're, they're, they're upset about whatever they're upset about, and they're there to haggle with the uh, front desk people that, uh, you know, they don't want to pay the fourteen fifty a day or the twelve fifty a day, whatever the suggested gratuity is. They want to they grind it lower. Uh, some literally don't pay a dime they just they just insist that uh you know i paid you 600 bucks for this cruise or 800 bucks for the cruise whatever i paid you and i paid you my taxes and port charges and fees and i gave you all this money for the bar tap uh, that's good enough that's just good enough and uh, if you don't pay your staff enough so that's your problem and and that's how these folks some of these folks think and, and are um on the other hand a lot of my viewers are the opposite <laughs> and i'm the same way i actually tip them more <laughs> The, the service that is provided to us on, uh, I got to say, 99 plus percentage of cruise, cruise, sh cruise ships and on every cruise I've ever taken, the staff on these cruise ships work so hard, so many hours, seven days a week, um, and you never hear them complaining. It, it's a rarity. I mean, occasionally you can you can walk by a little a little opening where the two, two of them are talking about something and there's a beef, but usually the beef is about somebody else who's working with them. It's usually another staff member, but that's life. But uh, the service that I've received from cruise ships and I, I'm not a high roller, I'm not in the upper end suites or anything like that. Uh, this service has been exceptional. And uh, the wait, wait staff, the bus boy staff, the maitre d's, the bartenders, uh, the servers, uh, the folks just cleaning up the floors and vacuuming the hallway and, Cleaning the glass uh, for all those, you know, all along the railway railing along the top of the ship, and the painters hanging off the side of the ship, painting the ship while it's moving. Uh, all the all the guys and girls running the uh, lifeboats, the tenders, all those folks, the folks that check in, check you out, the security guys—they are all just working their butts off and uh, making that cruise a great experience. And so, to tip a little extra is just uh, is just natural. It's just I really recommend it. Uh, always take a bunch of one dollar bills with you when you want to cruise, and uh, server brings you a drink. Throw them, give them an extra buck. I know there's an eighteen percent charge already on your drink. Don't worry about it. Give them a buck. They will make sure your drink never gets empty. That second drink will be there. They're ready. They're ready. Are you thirsty? You want another rum and coke? Because uh, you're down to about a third. You, you sure? You're never gonna go. Where is that server? Uh, and that ain't gonna happen. <laughs> uh, your wait staff, fantastic service. They'll take care of all the little things for you. You just kind of like a little extra chocolate sauce on that ice cream at the end of the. Uh, they'll, they'll make sure. Yeah, they'll take care. Of you. All kinds of stuff. It's great. Um, anyway, so that's how that works up. But on the top end, yes, I would say I'd say three to five percent is probably the cost of collecting the money in the first place, converting the money in the first place, and then distributing the money in the first place. But the cruise line covers all these expenses for these folks. And uh, at the end of their contract, they're flown home at the cruise line expense. That's part of the contract. And if they have a month off uh, after working, say, 11 months, they have a month off and then uh, they're uh, they're brought back for their next 11 month contract, they're flown back to wherever the ship 
whichever ship they're assigned to, usually the same one, but sometimes different, especially if there's a new ship coming on. And uh, these folks get graduated. They get moved up. They're in training all the time. They're constantly training to move up the ranks so that they don't stay as just one level. They eventually become a captain in a dining area or become a maitre d' or become a manager of the of a restaurant or of the bar. Uh, they become uh, part of the entertainment committee or whatever. And they just move up and their salary moves up. Their benefits move up. And that's why you see 15 and 20 and 30 year veterans on cruise ships. People who've been working on cruise lines for 30 years. They will never quit. They never gave it up because they love their they love their gigs. They make uh, they make more and more money each each year too as they graduate up. That's how it works. Uh, Tommy Eaton, uh, hey Bruce and all, sixty six and windy in Jacksonville, Florida. Tommy, how you doing? I see it. Uh, Randy Lucas, hi all, uh, hi uh, Bruce and all, rainy and a high of fifty eight today in Paradise, California. A little more rain in Paradise. Richard Karnamaski, uh, you can pay in advance for tips or wait till the end of the cruise. It's all supposed to go to the crew uh, only, 100%. Sylvan Forest, hi, Bruce, and all. 81 degrees, uh, sunny, windy here in Delray Beach, Florida. Getting our Bruce fix <laughs> with a glass or two of, uh, uh, is that abs abs absinthe and a cigar? Sounds exotic. Uh, thumbs and may you be monetized soon. Thumbs up and may you be monetized soon. Well, you brought it up. Speaking of monetization, Bruce is still not a monetized channel. This is day 29, four weeks plus a day. No monetization for this guy. Um, no monetization anywhere for small YouTubers. And so we are down to uh, just begging for help uh, from our subscribers and our viewers. Uh, super chat. If you know what it is, I'm not going to remind you. You know what Super Chat is. And if you, if you throw me a couple of dollars into that chip jar of mine, thank you very much. Throw me 10 bucks or more. Help yourself to one of those. Did you notice the necklace hanging over there? I have necklaces too, ladies, uh, uh, for a whole bunch of NFL teams, baseball teams, uh, basketball teams, colleges, NHL. Uh, if you're interested in a necklace, let me know. We'll uh, We'll set you up. Uh, I just haven't had the time yet to really go through my inventory to really show you guys. I think I'm going to have to make a video just for the gifts that I'm offering for donations to my channel. I don't want to take it, take the time up here. Uh, Pamela Jordan is, hell, is hey, saying hi to me. Hi, Bruce and everyone. It's sunny and 46 degrees. Very windy here in Iva, South Carolina today. It was 72 degrees here yesterday and you lost 30. Holy moly. Yep, another system coming through. Unbelievable. Stephen Ducar. Hi, Bruce. Sunny and 70 here in Denton, Texas. Stephen, how are you, buddy? Um, I think you're a regular. You've been here before, I think. Uh, but if not, welcome as a newbie. Um, Paula Kay is back. Uh, one, of my, uh, one of my first evers. Paula Kay. Uh, hi, Bruce. 35 and been snowing since yesterday morning. I believe we got a foot of snow and there's no stopping till tonight. Yikes. Oh, man, that's unreal, Paula. Unbelievable. When it comes down, it comes down. Bob Hollis, howdy, Bruce. 43, cold and windy in Atlanta. Bob, how are you? Stephen Ducar, question. Is Carnival still running 10% off Grand Turk excursions? Wouldn't know. I have no idea. Does anyone know the answer to that question? Uh, that might be one of those deals, Stephen. I'm going to speculate. Um, if you book an excursion before the cruise uh, while you're checking in online, they may well have deals for excursions that you book early, uh, but then I could be uh, whistling uh, whistling Dixie here. I could be wrong. But uh, we'll see if anyone has the answer to that one. Uh, Heather Young, hi. Kentucky been snowing in the 40s here. Oh, my Heather. <laughs> Jesus, you're not getting a break either. Loves to travel is here today. 60 here in Kansas. I was able to enjoy since it's my day off. Well, all right. Okay, welcome. Hanging out. That's great. Uh, loves to travel. Great to have you back. Debbie Emanuel, hi everyone, raining and 61 in Chico, five cruises and thumbs up. Samantha Farmer, <clears throat> have you ever thought of doing uh, Facebook Live and Twitch at the same time you do this live? Uh, well, funny enough, I registered for Twitch today. I uh, opened up a Twitch account. I'm kind of looking into it to see if it uh, might fit for me um, because apparently I can do a live stream here and forwarded at the same time. Uh, right now, I'm live on Twitter. Uh, I'm actually simulcasting live on Twitter right now. Um, uh, but I haven't thought of Facebook yet, Facebook Live yet. 
Uh, it's a little different in Canada than the U.S. Uh, uh, with Facebook for in some cases. Uh, but I'm looking into all of it, Samantha. I really am. I'm uh, I'm considering my options regarding um, exposure for the channel, uh, further reach out to more people, um, monetization opportunities above and beyond uh, just you know begging for a super chat um, or a PayPal donation or whatever. Um, and so yeah, I'm looking at everything. I really am. I'm uh, and I am kind of forced to do it because it's four weeks and counting that. YouTube just isn't getting back to us. Uh, we were told it was going to be a week. <laughs> That's going to be about a week. You're in review. It's going to be about a week. Yeah, one week. Debbie Manuel, I received my badges today. Love them, and thanks again, Bruce. You got the medallions. Fantastic. Folks, any of the others, get them. Let me know if they're coming in. Fabulous. Jim Thomas, uh, 54 in Redding, California, and rain. Jim Thomas, I bet you you need rain. I bet you you could use it. Uh, maybe not too much. Right on, sir. Welcome back, Jim. Uh, Tina uh, Odal. <laughs> Odal. Tina Odal. Thank you, Tina, for that. You're, you you got to help this old guy. You got to, you know, take my hand, walk me down the path, and show me where to go. This is great. Thank you so much. Tina Odal. Fantastic. Uh, Desi Wagner is here. Hi, Bruce. 38 and sunny, Buffalo Grove, Illinois. Welcome back, Desi. Uh, Tina Odal said, Stephen, I believe that 10% ends today for Grand Turk. How about that, uh, Stephen? There's a, there's a thought. There's some info for you. Charles Jordan, Royal Caribbean has already went to 1450 a day. Yeah, 1450 a day tips on Royal Caribbean and Celebrity about a month ago, maybe six weeks ago. Yeah, this is old news. Uh, if you were booked, however, before and you prepaid your gratuity, you were locked into the old rate. But so what? It's a buck more for seven days. Seven bucks. More whoop de do seven dollars. Who cares? Pay it, just shut up, give them the money. They earn it, they're worth it. It's not the cruise line being greedy, they're just trying to keep their people fed. It's all nothing personal, it's just money. <laughs> Steven uh, Dukar, uh, Tina um, Odal, I thought so too. Just wanted to make sure, uh, Tina. Tina Holt is here from Toronto, six degrees. Hi, Tina. Welcome back. I think you've been here before. And so I welcome you back from TO. I went to college in Toronto. I don't know if I mentioned that, but I went to George Brown College in Toronto. You'll never guess what I studied in Toronto because I don't think I've ever said it on the air. So the trivia is on. What did Bruce study in college in Toronto at George Brown College? Uh, I'll give you the years. Nine, oh, this is early. It's going back. 74 to 70. Seven, 74 to 77, George Brown College. What did I, uh, what did I study? I, I graduated. I'm, a, I'm a educated. <laughs> oh, I had nothing to do with YouTube, I'll tell you that. Uh, loves to travel, saying, since I travel alone, uh, I will give the room steward extra cash. That way, it's like having two people in the room. That way, he doesn't get cheated out of the money, but that's just me. And you know, uh, you're getting top-notch service. They're looking out for you. Um, any little request you have, you, they'll just drop everything and take care of you. Absolutely um, fantastic uh, way to go. Uh, Nina Frank, uh, I tip the ones that deserve it. Yes, don't feel obligated at all to give tips if I'm not happy. Everyone chooses the, chooses their work. Fair enough. Um I, I hear you, Nina, and you know I I like that philosophy in a way, but I also like the idea that if I prepay my tips, and if well I don't know, I'll say three or four or five dollars a day ends up going to staff down below that I will never meet, uh, some of the assistant uh, chefs, the cooks, the dishwashers, the janitors, uh, all of these folks, the laundry people that are you know they're doing all the work that we don't see. We only see clean towels and fresh sheets on our bedding, but we don't see the person who's doing that work. Uh, we're only seeing the person who's delivering it. Uh, these folks down below are getting some of that money. I'm a happy guy. I'm a happy guy, and I don't have to find them. I'll never meet them. I'm not, I'm not allowed to go down there. And so, uh, you know, if there's 200 people in the laundry department, who, who, do I, who do I tip? I don't know. Who did my sheets? I don't know. So anyway, that's just me. That's me. It's me. Richard, uh, interesting thing happened on the last cruise uh, on the last night. The waiter, she, uh, gave me heck for pouring my own wine from my bottle. <laughs> I seriously thought she was kidding. 
she said, okay, and poured and poured my wine. And no, they, they mean it. Yeah, you don't you don't have to do that. That's 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 my job. That's what I'm here for. I'm here to serve you. And etiquette dictates that your server pours your wine for you. <laughs> Quick story. I when I was in college, and you still haven't guessed what I did although I haven't got to the bottom of my notes here. Uh, when I was in college, I had a job for one week at the Royal York Hotel in Toronto, downtown Toronto. If any of you have ever been to Toronto, you'll know that that's the old, the grand old hotel in downtown Toronto, right across the street from the railway station, Union Station. And I had a gal in my class whose dad was the maitre d' of uh, the, uh, the restaurant known as the Imperial Room. The Imperial Room. The, the place to go and to, to, be, to see and to be seen in the 50s and the 60s and most of the 70s in Toronto. Although by the time I got there, it was waning big time. But in the 50s and the 60s, you went to the Imperial Room. Why? Frank Sinatra would come and sing at the Imperial Room. Tony Bennett would sing in the Imperial Room. Uh, Ella Fitzgerald with two week gig Imperial Room every year clockwork for sure. Anyway, I had a, I was a, uh, I got a gig, a job, <laughs> not a gig. I got a job as a busboy <laughs> in the Imperial Room, and uh, no experience, uh, no nothing. Uh, I was told I had to have a white shirt, I had to have a, uh, a, a bow tie, and uh, they would provide me with a with a black tuxedo type jacket I had to wear dark pants leather black leather shoes and so no problem for me I had that I had that in my repertoire my wardrobe practically and I showed up for my my one week my one and only week I lasted four days basically and it was nothing personal uh, I could have kept the job but it interfered with my schedule because on the weekends I would go back home from whence I came which is Kitchener Waterloo Ontario uh, which is about 80 miles west of Toronto, and I would leave Friday afternoons uh, either the train or I'd be hitchhiking with my guitar in my hand uh, to get a ride. And the guitar got me a lot of rides. Anyway, um, I'm working the Imperial Room, and uh, my second night there, right over there, a couple tables over there, the former Premier of Ontario and some friends, highfalutin folks, uh, and he was a nobody. I mean, he, he, you know, he's a premier, former premier of Ontario. It's like a former governor of a state, you know. But, uh, you know, there were bigger wigs than that hanging around that room. But not the, not the week I was there. <laughs> the entertainment, the week before I was there, was Ella Fitzgerald. The week I worked, Buddy Greco. <laughs> Missed Ella Fitzgerald by a week. Could have had my first week as a busboy watching Ella Fitzgerald. And the waiters were telling me, Oh, you should have been here last week. That tip money was unbelievable. I'm going, yeah. Buddy Greco, the room could hold 500 people, and there were 50 people in the room. Buddy wasn't selling out the place. <laughs> anyway, great time to learn as a newbie how to be a busboy. Well, I'm with uh, two waiters in our little section, and we have a captain, and then there's the maitre d' at the front end, and uh, we have a table of uh, oh, six people sitting in this around this table. I don't know any of these people, but I'm sure they're well enough to do. And the dinner was had, and all was well. And uh, my job was to take the dirty dishes that the waiters would bring to me. They would bring it to my station, and I would just whisk those dishes right out into the kitchen. And I would come back and uh, keep that flow going, make sure there's always water in the, 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 the you know decanters and all this sort of stuff. Well, we got a little busy. I, I don't know how it happened, but we had like three tables on the go. And the one waiter looked at me and said, Bruce, uh, grab the coffee over there and refill, offer to refill the, that table with coffee. I thought, oh, sure. Yeah, I could do that. How hard can this be? So I come up to this uh, table of six folks and uh, I figure start with the ladies. You know, I mean, ladies first. And there was a, a grandmotherly like woman sitting there and uh, she had on a a little bit of a mink stole around her shoulders or on her evening gown, you know, for the chill, you know. And uh, I asked her, would you like a little more coffee, man? And she said, yes, I, I would love to have some more coffee. And I made a terrible mistake, a huge mistake. I picked up the coffee cup, not the plate that the coffee cup was sitting on. I picked up the cup. What was I doing? She went, <gasps> I get the audible gasp 
And it's kind of like the movies, you know, where, where uh, the director works it out in such a way that with the sound effects, that when the one person goes, <gasps> no other sound is in the room but that sound, <laughs> and all 150 people in the room are wondering what the heck's going on in section three, table six, bus boy, what's his name, who's about to get his ass handed to him. <laughs> One of the waiters who was standing by saw what was happening. He went, oh, just um, just take the cup and saucer back to the station. Bring a new cup and saucer. With, carry it with the plate. Oh, yes, sir. So I went back, brought back a cup and saucer holding the plate. And then I poured coffee for her and put it down. And crisis averted, sort of. That was my experience uh, on uh, being a, uh, a server in a high-end, very high-end restaurant. So. You have you got someone here who wants to pour your wine for you? You just let them do their job. You just sit back and if you want wine, just point, point. Can I can I have some more? And they'll be right there. That's what they live for. But oh man, I learned something that night. One, I'm poor. Two, I was brought up poor. Three, I had no idea what the hell I was doing. And number four, I wasn't cut out for this. <laughs> but ironically, many years later. I was a manager in a brokerage firm, a vice president, and I had to. Uh, I would be invited out by the uh, president of the company or, or general manager for the entire country for a lunch or dinner when we had business meetings in Toronto. And uh, we didn't go to the Imperial Room, but we went into some pretty high-end restaurants. And now I had to learn how to act in a six-star restaurant and how to hold the cutlery which fork is for what, which spoon is for what. And uh, oh yeah, I, I, I learned up quick. <laughs> Thankfully, I didn't have to pay for it. The, the boss paid for those chits, but oh my. And now I'm on the other side of it, watching the folks serving me. Oh, that was something. Love that story. Uh, anyway, many years ago, many years ago. Uh, thank you, Richard, for that, uh, for that comment. Samantha Farmer, they used to give you envelopes to tip. Uh, not put it in your bill as it should be according to the service you received. That's right, Samantha. Those are the days where you would tip the people you saw. And uh, I have a suspicion that the the uh, in those days, uh, the staff would then share tips with other staff after the cruise is over type of thing. But I, I, I can't be sure. I can't be sure. Wendy Thompson. Oh, God bless you, Wendy. Uh, $1.99 uh, 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 super chat. Thank you very much for my saying buy me a, buy a soda. I think I'll have a little soda right now. Thank you very much. My my drink of choice, uh, Coca-Cola, caffeine-free Diet Coke here in Canada. Of course, it's in bilingual language. You know, After all, it's uh, two languages in this country. That's how big we are. Mm. Cheers, everyone. I could use a server to bring, to bring this to me and pour this to me in a nice little crystal glass, don't you think? And uh, never mind. Thank you, Wendy, very much. Uh, Tina. Uh, started watching your channel lately, and I like it. I like that you like it. I'm really happy you're here, Tina. This is great. And tell your friends and everyone you know to subscribe to my channel. There's a button here. There's a button there. Join the show. Fantastic, Tina. You have any questions, you let me know. Um, Ulani, uh, hi, Bruce. 73 here in Fort Worth. Not bad in Fort Worth today. Stephen Dukar found it, he said. Kelly Astanovich is here. Hey, guys. Five inches of snow in Canton, Ohio. Kelly, have you got your medallions yet? I've sent them. I'm curious if you got them. Let me know. Uh, Stephen Ducar, enjoying 10% off future short excursion bookings in Grand Turk using the promo code. There it is. Folks, you can see it for yourselves. Through Wednesday, valid only for pre-cruise bookings. There you go. That's what I thought. Might have been a pre-cruise booking deal. Jim Thomas has given us a thumbs up. Wendy Emanuel. Yeah, hey, Wendy. She's going. Way to go, Wendy. Give him Bruce a couple bucks. J uh, Stephen Ducar, the code was on Facebook. Fantastic. Betsy Lane Broadcasting, she says. Um, Deb Boy Debbie saying, George Brown College. I went to East York Collegiate, 1973, not too far away. Yeah, that would have been close. Uh, Betsy Lane, accounting, she's saying. Uh, accounting. Broadcasting? Accounting? Uh, I'm still not quite sure what's going on. Is this a code? Is this like a puzzle for me? Betsy, I don't Oh, oh. Sorry, Betsy, you're guessing what I took in college. Sorry, I, I forgot. I get, uh, you know, sorry about that. Great memory, just short, just just incredibly short. But oh, sharp for about 15 seconds. Broadcasting? No, no, I should have done that. You know, no, no, I didn't do broad. No, I didn't have the teeth for it. Look at him. Are you kidding me? This, this, 
That <laughs> doesn't work. Uh, accounting. Oh God, no, no, no. My dad was a bookkeeper, uh, and and not just uh, you know the guy at the back end that you hand this receipts to. He he was he could have gone right into like full blown chartered accountancy if he wanted to, but he was more entrepreneurial. But he could count the money. <laughs> Randy Lucas, a studied uh, interpersonal skills, basket weaving, laugh out loud. Oh, close. So close. <laughs> Elizabeth Green, uh, I over tip and save for that. There you go, Elizabeth, right on. The Steaming Bean class was just dismissed. We had a former NHLer visit the school this afternoon. Who'd, who'd you have? Uh, former Ottawa Senator Carlin Nordstrom. Oh, right on. I, I, I don't know. Pamela Jordan, accounting? No, not accounting, Pamela. No, Jim Thomas, Eskimo dentistry. Yeah, you can tell. Yeah, yeah, it's all it's all offline and uh, yeah, right on Eskimo dentistry. Uh, Kelly, did you study business administration? I uh, no, no, I didn't. Uh, I didn't study business administration. The steaming bean. Bruce playing uh, oompa, oompa, oompa papa music. Oompa papa music. Bruce playing oompa papa music. Or oompa pa ah oompa pa music. There we go. Yes, I did play oompa pa music. Made a lot of money doing that. Peter Heckema just did the math on a ship like the Allure regarding tips. Uh, six thousand passengers times fourteen fifty a day per person will add up to two point six million uh, on a four week month. That's not junk change. That's true. Uh, but then you take the other side of that and you go, okay, well seventeen hundred staff, if I recall, I think fifteen hundred are in the tip pool, 200 senior officers and are not. Uh, 1,500 uh, times 28 days times 12 hours a day of shift work. <laughs> Divide it out. It ain't a lot of money per person. Um, and certain folks get more than others, uh, of course. But, hey, it all helps. The steaming bean. Okay. Trivia question. Name the cruise line which a serial killer sailed on. Ooh, uh, let's see if anybody knows. Peter Heckema. He's throwing me a hot dog. Uh, what a guy. Thanks, Peter. Two bucks from Super Chat. This hot dog is not for me. It's for my wife. My wife, the, Genes the uh, Jennifer Aniston lookalike that you have yet to see, uh, I will tell her. I'll tell her that, uh, honey, uh, I got you a hot dog from Peter, and I'll tell her that I got the $1.99 uh, already from Wendy, uh, which gets me a hot dog, too, uh, with, with a drink. I mean, we're, you know, the dog and a drink is included in this package. Thanks, both of you guys. Uh, we'll take it. Uh, Debbie Emanuel, great job, Peter. Uh, uh, Tina, um, I love my mom dearly, but boy, did I have to educate her quickly on her first night in the dining room. Applebee's is about as fancy as she has seen before that. Yeah, you, this is the thing with uh, uh, <laughs> those of us who kind of, who've been to the higher end places from time to time or been exposed to it. If you've never been exposed to it, it's a whole other world. I mean, it's just another existence. And uh, there's etiquette and there's manners and there's um, pace uh, and there's just, you know, whatever. And, and of course, the cruise lines are not there to, you know, pick on you for not doing it right. They're not like that at all. They're easy going. Uh, but I love to sort of, fit in or merge into the ambiance of the place. So if I'm in a Holland America cruise ship in the dining room where I know it's five-star food, it's really nice, I don't go in there with my shorts and my flip-flops and looking like a schmuck. No, no, no I don't. Do I go in there presentable uh, because I know I'm going to be fed nicely. I'm going to be served professionally. And so... I'm ready. I, I'm ready to go. I love it. And it's part of the whole experience. And where can you do that for six, seven nights in a row for seven, eight hundred bucks? I mean, come on. A five star, uh, five star uh, hotel uh, in Vegas or in, in Disney World, Los Angeles, Miami, New York. Uh, you, you try you try and hang out in New York City at a five star hotel, downtown Midtown, eat that kind of food. Five star food every day, every night, uh, for six ninety nine. Go, go ahead, go, go try it, go try it. Yeah, you're not gonna last a night. You're gonna get, you gone. <laughs> Your credit card's gonna go boink. It ain't gonna work. But on a cruise, okay, you add the tips, you add the port charges and fees, and you, you know, yeah, sure, you add it all up. You're still getting such a bargain, such value for your money. We're spoiled as cruisers uh, sometimes. We forget. Uh, 
because we don't do the other side. Uh, we don't do the downtown New York thing. We're, we're going cruising all the time because we can. Because uh, once you start cruising, you realize, oh, man, you kidding me? I get all this service. I get all this attention. I, I get all this. Uh, I get I get really decent food. Or I can go to the specialty restaurants if I want even more. Uh, and it's compared to, say, Manhattan or to uh, Chicago or to uh, Frisco, San Francisco. You try to do a five-star hotel in Frisco for a week. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, 500 bucks, 800 bucks, no. A night, yeah, yeah, oh my. Great job, Peter. Uh, let's see what we got here. Norman Duarte, snowing again here in Bridgeport, Connecticut. Uh, you're getting more. I hear you're getting much unbelievable, my friend. I'm uh, Norman, stay inside, just just stay inside. Tommy Eaton, did you study uh, psychology? No, I didn't, no. <laughs> Betsy Lane, drafting. Oh, very good, 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 good. Nice. nice, that's a neat profession. No, my best friend did, though. Best buddy in high school. He became a draftsman. He was so good in grade 10. We went up to grade 13 in Ontario. Uh, he got a summer job in grade 10, uh, worked summer job again in grade 11, graduated grade 12. They hired him full time. They didn't want him to go to university. They didn't want him to go to college. They, just, they took him in right now, and they put him with the senior draftsman. That's how good this guy was because he was self-taught, and he was just a sponge. He was just a sponge, and he, had, he was so ahead of – everyone else uh, the teachers in high school were kind of gravitating to him that's how good he was he was like a savant great guy uh fx monte cristo human resource manager uh no i was not uh, study not study for that um kind of did that a little bit in my career i guess uh, fx monte welcome back or welcome for the first time i'm not sure uh, great to have you richard the love boat for the serial killer <laughs> <laughs> That's the guess. Steaming Bean, uh, Princess Cruise Lines is the answer. Really? Princess Cruise Lines. Samantha Farmer, yes, I would pay for the Coco K as it will be the same as going to a water park. There, there, there's our topic of the day, which I was going to eventually get to. Uh, Betsy Lane, computer systems. No, no, not in 74. <laughs> I took computer class one year in high school, flunked miserably. We had those cards. Remember the punch? Remember the chads? You remember those chads? Yeah, we had those punch cards. But in those days, we had to use a pencil to just color in the, the number like a zero one and a zero four and a zero seven you know and then we'd, we'd give the punch cards to our teacher he'd take them to university of waterloo they'd come back and then we'd get a printout from the computer would tell us what our program did and mine didn't work every time never i couldn't i couldn't do one plus one is two on a punch card on a I couldn't do it i just not good at drawing in with a pencil <laughs> I thought computers useless. There's no future in computers. If I can't use a computer in 1974, 73, what's the what's the point of it all? Computers. Oh, give me a break. Computers. <laughs> it's about the farmer Betsy Lane. They didn't have computers back then. There you go. <laughs> Dave Kinsey, funeral director. Now you're getting nowhere near warm. <laughs> Matter of fact, you're quite cold. <laughs> Debbie Manuel, uh, as an educator, you are a great orator. Uh, thank you. Some people use another word for that. <laughs> Steaming bean, Elizabeth uh, Wetafur was the serial killer. Elizabeth Wetlafur was the serial killer. I never heard that name before. I don't. I've not, I don't know anything about it. Isn't that something, Elizabeth uh, Breen? I think you were just a businessman. That's all. You were just a businessman. That's all you were. Just a just a businessman. I'll tell you. I uh, I used to walk to school a couple blocks, and um, I'll give you another hint. The the campus I was on was called the Casaloma Cas the Casaloma Campus. Now in Toronto. There's a famous landmark. It's it's a private home that was once was a private home, huge, huge mansion, built like a castle with the turrets and everything, still standing to this day. And it was built by a very wealthy individual uh, who didn't stay wealthy for long, but he was wealthy for a while uh, from early 1900s. And um, the building, uh, it was lived in for, I don't know, 10 or 20 years. They lived in it, the, he and the wife and children, I guess. Uh, but unfortunately, as time goes on, um, and as money changes and the world changes, this individual and the family uh, really uh, lost it all. And uh, I think the stock market crash had a lot to do with it. Anyway, the property reverted back to the city of Toronto because of uh, unpaid property taxes. Because when you build yourself a castle, 
the city is going to charge you more taxes because he just made the, the land much more valuable. So you owe us more money. Is this a great country or what? But he couldn't afford the taxes. So I think he passed away, heart attack, whatever, what happened to him. The house went into receivership or whatever, and it reverted to the city. The city uh, took the house and made it a uh, park. And uh, now the castle to this day, Castle Loma Castle, or at least the last time I was in it in the 80s, <laughs> uh, you can take a tour of the of the house stunning place and i think they have occasional private um, like corporate uh, gigs there and stuff and there's staff there and everything you can you can have a wedding reception there and all this sort of stuff anyway that was the uh, that was where the house was now just around that house all around that house is uh, forest i think is it is it forest hills in toronto uh, my torontonian might know um tina you might have to help me here uh but it's a well-to-do neighborhood all around up there and uh, it's only a couple blocks away from the Casaloma campus of George Brown College, where I used to go. So I used to walk to school, and oh, once or twice a week, I would see this um, stretch limo um, coming down the hill from Casaloma. Not the castle itself, but the neighborhood around it, a chauffeur-driven limo. And in the back would be some 40-ish, 50-year-old guy, 40, 50-year-old guy reading the financial paper, the Globe and Mail or Financial Post, on the way to Front Street, which is Toronto's Wall Street, heading down there. And I, I would just kind of watch and think to myself, hmm, I wonder what that would be like someday. And down the road, uh, how many years later, uh, <laughs> that was 74, 75 by 19... Uh, Oh my gosh, sooner than I thought, 78 years later, I was a stockbroker and I became a VP of a brokerage firm. Didn't have my own limo driven, my chauffeur driven limo, but I was in that guy's business. And so I now knew what that guy was doing every day, five days a week. And that was quite the educate, education for me. That was quite true. But that's not what I studied at college. I was not studying that for college. Uh, let's see here. Uh, <laughs> Uh, yeah, Elizabeth saying you're just a businessman. Wendy Thompson, music. You you studied music? Nope, didn't study music. Uh, FX Monte Cristo. Uh, I did not go. Uh, I did not go way. Just did. I did not. I did not go way. Just did comment. Did not go away. Just did. Just did. Uh, okay. Uh, uh, nice to have you, uh, Richard Kornmaski. We used to mess with the guys' programs, and move the cards around <laughs> in their program. It was funny. <laughs> Shuffling the deck, as it were. Yeah, shuffling the computer card deck. Oh, my. Betsy Lane, computer go back to the 50s. Oh, wow. Peter Heckema, my, 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 I'm going to say my wife just came back. Uh, you, 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 you didn't mean that, did you? Like, you, you didn't spell that to, to refer to her in any other way. You meant wife, right? W I F E. You look at it. <laughs> <clears throat> just came back from a three day business trip. To New York City, the well was the room was well over four hundred dollars per night plus food. Yeah, and that that wasn't a uh, tourist uh, five star, was it? Uh, with the, the all the bells and whistles room, uh, I don't think so. But yeah, yeah, New York. Oh my gosh, Peter Heckema should be my wife. <laughs> Good save, Peter. Good save, right on. Betsy Lane, commercial art, commercial art. You were in the commercial arts. Uh, I was not in the commercial arts. No. Uh, let me give you another hint. Uh, this is kind of fun. Uh, the school uh, was known as a trade school. Okay. Uh, this particular campus was known as a trade school campus. Hmm. Now, uh, a lot of the students who went there were apprenticing in a trade, right? Uh, I wasn't, but they were. And the trades uh, were like plumbers and pipe fitters uh air conditioning systems uh hvac systems elevator uh training uh all of these trades that just make the world work electronic you know electricians uh all these kind of safety systems alarm systems that type of thing all these kids uh would go to the school and i remember a little, little quick story for you i remember in my first year oh i was starving i was starving um my parents would give me 40 bucks on uh, Sunday night, because I would leave Monday morning back to Toronto, they give me forty dollars, and that would last me the week. Twenty bucks went to rent, and twenty bucks to eat for five days. 
<laughs> and uh, of course it's like 73 74 so you know that would be what 40 50 bucks today anyway um uh i would come in in the morning to the to the cafeteria and i would have a coffee and i would have bacon and eggs uh bacon and egg uh, toasted sandwich toasted sandwich bacon and eggs the two combined would be a buck buck 25 in those days today you know five dollars four dollars whatever and it was so delicious. Oh, when you're 20 years of age, 19 years of age, and this is your breakfast. Oh, I was hungry. <laughs> and then lunch would be back to the cafeteria and, and you know, two bucks. Uh, you'd have your, you know, fried chicken and uh, some vegetables, mashed potatoes and gravy, whatever. And, uh, you know, you'd eat, you, you would just, there would be nothing left on the plate. I mean, the plate would be cleaned off. There would be nothing. Anyway, around me are all these apprentices, these guys. There are, some of them are in their first year, second year, third year. It's like four or five years of apprenticeship. And what the deal is that you go to school for maybe uh, two months, and then you go back to work for like six months, and then you come in for another two months, and you go back to – you're getting paid the whole time. So these guys are getting paid. And every year that goes by, they're getting paid more, and they're part of the union. And it's good money. Um, in 1973, the minimum wage was a buck fifteen an hour. These guys are getting $5 an hour to go to school. <laughs> Once they graduate, you're getting 18 bucks an hour, 20 bucks an hour as a licensed electrician or plumber or whatever they were doing. So these students, these these poor students are getting four, five, six, seven, eight bucks an hour as apprentices. And I'm watching out of the corner of my eye and I see the guy uh, coming in for breakfast and I got quarters like on Friday. I'm down to quarters, nickels and dimes. OK, I, 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 it's it's working for me. I got my fried bacon and egg sandwich and my coffee. And I'm watching this guy over here, and he's ordering bacon and eggs from the chef there, the cook, uh, with the home fries and the toast and the coffee and the juice. And then he sits over there, and he's eating it. He only eats half of it throws the rest of it away. <laughs> oh, my God. <laughs> killed me. It was just killing me. I, was just, uh, I wasn't desperate enough to go and grab that stuff, but it, it just just disgusted me that I'm paying full freight here to go to this college on my dime. And these kids, these punks uh, are living it up already. And they had cars. They had their own cars. Uh, they had girlfriends. <laughs> they spent money on their girlfriends. Oh, those are days. Anyway, that there's a hint for you. Trade school. Uh, what did Bruce uh, study? I mean, it's easy. Come on. Uh, steaming bean. Bruce is wearing an orange shirt. BC Lions. Good luck, steaming bean. Bruce, too much chit chat about uh, houses. Chit chat about cruises. So at the farmer, the steaming bean. No, it, this is a cruise full time. Dot com shirt. <laughs> the steaming bean. Oh, okay. Uh, steaming bean sensible shirt. Uh, Richard, no, it's Syracuse orange man. Steaming bean limo schlimo. Yeah, you're you're not a limo guy. I get that. Tina also went to George Brown St. James campus for nursing. See, there's a fellow. Graduate, I did not go for nursing. <laughs> Trucking, no. Loves to travel. Small appliance repair, no. Sylvan Forrest, study tailoring, maybe, no. Richard Kornmaski, engineer, no. Jim Thomas, business management, no. Steaming Bean, how come cruise lines do not focus on cooking a good breakfast? Steaming Bean, you go on the wrong cruise ships. You're just on the wrong cruise ships. I don't get you. Uh, Betsy Lane, offset printing, nice try, no. Elizabeth Green, I was apprenticed to do hair, no student loan. Uh, and got paid. It's all about trade schools. There you go. Richard Kornemaski, oh my God, food must have been cheaper in 74 in Canada. I couldn't touch that breakfast for at least four bucks. Cup of coffee was 10 cents. Oh my gosh. Sebastian is here. Hi, Bruce. 17 days before Symphony of the Seas Cruise. We're already counting hours now. Kelly Stjanovich, no medallions met yet. They're on the way. Keep your eye open. Michelle Lucas, train conductor. No. From the future, seven day inclusive resort or cruise. <laughs> Seven day inclusive resort or cruise? Cruise. You gotta go on a cruise, man. Bob Hollis, mechanic. No, but mechanical. Something mechanical. I was studying something mechanical. Yeah. They're getting warmer. Okay. Topic of the day cruise lines. Uh, what about this story about Royal Caribbean? And I got another story for you here about uh, cruise lines that are starting to offer. Um, longer port stays, uh, one to two nights. Um, it's becoming more and more common, especially in Europe and Asia, uh, where cruise lines are saying to the passengers, uh, we got an all-inclusive deal here. It's a 10-day deal. It's a seven-day cruise. 
Uh, we got uh, two nights uh, in a hotel before the cruise. We got the cruise. And then after the cruise, we got a night in a hotel uh, as well. Uh, so now you can see the city that you're flying to and flying out of uh, before and after and not be panicked about getting there and getting out. The other deal that's being offered now is cruise lines are now coming out and saying, uh, well, we're doing a 15-day cruise, a 20-day cruise. Uh, but instead of just coming in at 8 in the morning and leaving at 5 in the afternoon and be gone, uh, we're going to come into Singapore and we're going to come in at uh, 8 in the morning. Or when you wake up, we're, we're docked and we're there all night and we don't leave until tomorrow night. And now you can go see Singapore for, for what it's got. Same with Hong Kong. You can do the same in uh, Tokyo or you can do the same in uh, – in uh, in uh, Saigon, Ho Chi Minh City, uh, or uh, Taipei, or um, others. And this is becoming more and more common with cruise lines. They're beginning to offer this type of deal. And I think it's going to become even more common, especially with Mediterranean cruises. Uh, I don't know if it'll be common in the Caribbean. I, I, um, I have a feeling it won't be. I have a feeling that the Caribbean will still be a seven-day cruise. Uh, there might be a hotel before. There might be a hotel after in some cases. With the, depending on the cruise line, but uh, I think it's going to be a three three stop, maybe a four stop cruise for seven days, and uh, it's going to be more private islands, more private resorts, rather than just going to drop you off in Georgetown, going to drop you off in uh, wherever. Uh, we're going to drop you off now at uh, Coco K, and that's my next topic. The topic is Royal Caribbean is spending. I finally got the amount two hundred million dollars to upgrade Coco K. 200 million. You guess what? It's going to cost you to go there. <laughs> of course. Are you going to pay it? That's the question. Will you pay? Now, it's not like you got on the cruise ship and found out halfway through the cruise, oh my God, oh my God, they didn't tell me. We're going to Coco K tomorrow. Ah, uh, I didn't know. No, you knew. You booked the cruise six months ago. You saw the itinerary. Coco K is in the itinerary. What I expect is going to happen with Royal Caribbean is if they aren't doing it already, one, they're going to just include the, the, the visitation into your cruise, or they're going to offer you that balcony cabin for $6.99, and then they're going to say, uh, two people in the cabin? Okay, 100 bucks more. You get to go to Coco Cay. And you're going to have to ask yourself, do I want to pay that up front or not? Because if I don't pay it, I have to stay on the ship. Because it's at that pier, uh, and the only place to walk to is Coco Cay. You can't go and take a taxi ride and explore the Bahamas. Eh, no, 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 no. That is a secure facility. You're not going anywhere. You're either staying on the ship, and the only way you're getting off the ship is if your badge or your room key scans down below on the security desk, and it says, yeah, you're good to go because you paid your admission fee to Coco Cay. I have a feeling it will be the latter. I think it'll be an add-on charge because from what I'm reading on Coco K, this isn't just a little rinky-dink little water park we're talking about. Uh, I don't know if you folks know this, but let me read the amenities they're offering here. Uh, what does 200 million get you? You know, money. You know, money doesn't go as far as it used to. You know, um, first of all, the features of this water park um, is they're building two water towers. Uh, tall, tall towers, 135 feet uh, for one of them, 13 different water slides coming off of these towers, uh, 1,600 foot long zip line. Uh, there's a helium balloon ride that they're installing that you can go 450 feet up into the air. That's a 45 story building uh, above the area. You're going to have an unbelievable view for 20 miles all around on a clear day. Uh, there's a massive wave pool being built. There's also a fresh water pool being built, the largest in the Caribbean, with in-water loungers uh, already, uh, a swim-up bar, and poolside cabanas, which will be for rent, obviously, additionally. There'll be a new VIP zone built uh, called the Coco Beach Club. Um, and they're installing what are known as Maldive style, Maldive style over the water cabanas with private water slides and staffed by a cabin attendant. So you get your own little Maldive cabana, water cabana with an attendant to take care of all your needs. Um, 
the deal apparently so far is they're talking about pricing each ride separately. So if you want to go in the wave pool, there's a charge for that. You want to go to the uh, the uh, water towers down the water slides, there's a fee for that. You want to do the zip line, there's a there's a fee for that. The uh, the whole deal is different. Drinks, of course, are extra. The cabanas are extra, uh, either by the pool or by the beach club. Going into the beach club is an extra charge because it's exclusive, uh, all higher end stuff. Uh, food, apparently, for the most part, will be uh, no charge to the passengers because it's part of your cruise, but the drinks are extra. And so I did some basic math. Being the non businessman that I, uh, you know, was uh, not in college, I did some numbers and I figured, okay, 200 million bucks, they got to get their money out in 10 years. 20 million a year, you got to get that money out plus interest. And uh, I thought, well, you know, they're going to have four to six ships a week. Uh, pulling in there. You got all the celebrity and all of Royal uh, Royal Caribbean going here. So I can imagine that five out of seven days, there will be at least one ship at the pier. I can see where there'll be even more than one ship from time to time at the pier because this place is so huge. They have 160 locals who they're hiring full-time to work there, or, or at least I'm assuming full-time. And then all kinds of businesses around there will be offered work to deliver uh, maintenance work, uh, the chemicals for the water, security, uh, you know, all, water, uh, drinks, uh, alcohol, uh, food. I mean, the handling of it all. <clears throat> it's going to be quite the operation. 20 million a year is what they got to get out of it. And I was thinking, well, if they're, uh, if they're bringing in, uh, you know, 100,000 people a week, uh, I can see that as a possibility, but at least 50,000 people a week could be done here. The ship has 6,000 people. Uh, if you bring in the ship with 6,000 people, 5,000 are getting off that ship to go to the Coco Cay, at least. There's only going to be 1,000 left on board. Well, you get one, you know, one ship, uh, you know, every five days a week, that's 25,000 there, and a second ship comes in on a couple of extra days. All right, you're at 35, maybe 40,000 people a week. Uh, they got to charge uh, 40, 50 bucks a head to make it pay. Uh, $40 a person, 50,000 people a week, uh, 2 million a week, uh, 100 million a year, less expenses. Uh, you got to bring out, that'll net you out 20 million. I mean, that's a good profit margin. This is the kind of business these cruise lines are getting into their own facilities. Um, I don't know anything about uh, whether there's going to be weddings held here. Will they have, will they have a, any kind of pavilion center? where they can host a wedding and then a reception with entertainment and dancing and the photographing and all that. I don't know. Uh, I know that that's happening at other private islands and resorts by other cruise lines. Uh, would be shocked if they weren't doing it here. But I can see this being a, uh, a direction they're going to head. And I can see cruisers, cruise passengers, specifically booking certain ships because the itinerary includes this place. Especially if you got the kids. They're 8 and 12. They're 8 and 10. They're 7 and 9. They're 11 and 13. You're going here. Big time. And uh, that that's where the money is, folks. Uh, let me just see here. We got some more comments. Um, any more complaints about my uh, university or my college days? <laughs> Elizabeth Green, 12 days until our two-day Bahamas Paradise cruise. Uh, Charles Jordan, HVAC, no, nope, Steaming Bean, he's talking about cruising again. Thank God he's not talking about the BC Lions or the Ottawa Red Blacks. He's talking about cruising. Uh, yeah, okay, Steaming Bean. <laughs> Jim Thomas, I'm thinking the same thing. Uh, steaming Bean, I lived in Singapore for three years, loved it. Uh, Isku Park, hi, Bruce, it's Isku from Thunder Bay, Ontario, minus three and sunny. It's getting warmer there. From the future, Royal Caribbean is becoming the one-stop shop. Great. Richard Kornomaski, Princess does that. It's called More Time in Port. Cruises multiple days in several ports. Exactly. Uh, I think All America is also starting it too. Seeming Bean, did you catch uh, Bruce clapping his hands? Kind of scaring me. <laughs> Sylvan Force, our ship stayed uh, two days in Maui. It was enjoyable. We went to a luau on my birthday, visited Lahani, Lah, Lah, Lahana, Lahanai, Lahanai uh, <laughs> on the first day and saw the island the next day. Great. That, that's, that's nice. Steaming Bean, Lahana is a great town. Stayed a week there. Cam Wilson, hi, everybody. 
Heather Young, hi, Cam, Peter Heckema. Wondering if they will ever build a place to stay on the islands like Coco Cay. Then it'll become a destination. The cruise lines will have it all. Yeah, I uh, I don't know. Um, maybe, uh, but I, I have a feeling that the land that they've leased and under the terms and conditions that they've leased it, uh, they've probably, they're allowed to operate the way they're operating. But at the end of the day, everyone's gone and only the locals are left. Uh, but you never know. Um, you know, uh, if, if Marriott ever teamed up with Royal Caribbean to offer timeshare, uh, you could do timeshare units over there and you could arrive at your timeshare on a cruise ship, spend the week, and you could depart from there on a cruise ship back to where you came. Think about that. You never know. Uh, I can see that coming someday, uh, whether it's Coco Cay or Mexico or, you know, wherever. Uh, loves to travel. Steaming bean. I love uh, Lahana. I, I've been there 14 times. I stay at the Maui guest house. It's only a couple of blocks from the water, but it's really a nice, it's a really nice place. Richard Kornamaski, uh, the one cruise we're looking at is uh, multiple days in Dubai, uh, Barcelona, St. Petersburg. Should be great for 68 days. Yeah, that's that's awesome stuff. Fantastic. Jim Thomas, what a good first cruise. Uh, yeah, uh, you know, it's, it's becoming more and more common to see uh, Singapore for two days, uh, Hong Kong for two days. Although I think two days is too short because it's really only one night. You get there in the morning. You're there all day that night. You're there for the rest of the next day until about three and four in the afternoon, then you're gone. You're really only there for one evening, really, uh, if you make it a two-nighter. But the problem with that is you're tying up space on the pier, and the cruise lines lose money when they're just sitting there on the pier. Casinos are closed, and you're eating food in Hong Kong. You're not eating food on the ship in the specialty restaurants. And so there's this you know, balancing act that they – would really rather you be spending money on board and they don't want to be spending rent money to the uh, pier just to sit there. They want to be moving. They want to get going. So that's, uh, that's part of this, uh, uh, you know, uh, battle between the, between the two. Yeah. It'll be interesting to see how this, uh, uh Coco K deal works out in the end. Uh, uh, there may well be for the, uh, for the suites up at the top, the top end suites, they may well have an all inclusive deal for their cruise. You know, it's 500 a night per person, uh, includes Coco Bay, all you want, includes spa, all you want, includes specialty dining, all you want. You're paying us 1000 a night for the room. Enjoy yourself, right? Could be. Uh, we'll see. Steaming Bean, I want to share a cabin with Bruce and his wife on a Hawaiian cruise. Would be fun. Ain't happening. It's just not going to happen. It's, it doesn't sound fun to me. <laughs> uh I was going to say nothing personal, but I might have to say it's personal. <laughs> I can tell you right now, I know another person that ain't going to be interested, and she's uh, not here, but I know she's not interested. <laughs> we, we might see you on the ship from time to time, right? Well, you know, we'll, we'll give you a hi. How are you doing? How's the cruise going for you? Uh, but I don't think we're going to be in the same cabin together ever. <laughs> <laughs> oh my goodness um richard kornmaski steaming and interior <laughs> samantha farmer real caribbean already does that with star class well I, that's what i was suggesting that they, you know wouldn't surprise me if they're already doing it and they're going to be doing it here uh, other cruise lines will have the same all-inclusive pay the whole thing and just enjoy yourself fast uh, but for most of the passengers 85 90 percent it's an add-on, and uh, it'll be you know an add-on you have to pick. Now, in my case, uh, would I take a cruise uh, knowing that uh, the ship I'm on is stopping at this place? Probably not. Um, at my age, uh, none of those uh, rides are in my comfort zone where I want to be. Um, I'm quite happy to uh, just you know hang out uh, on on a uh, you know for. A, few hours uh, maybe in downtown San Juan, Puerto Rico, walking around a little bit. That's fine. If it's not too hot, if it's too hot, I'll stay on board the ship. It's air conditioned. <laughs> but hey, I get it. Uh, we had a we had a little girl, my wife and I, we had a daughter. And uh, when she was 8, 10, 12, 14, oh man, this would have been right there. This would have been the number one reason we'd have taken a cruise 
on that cruise line, on that cruise ship, to that location. You bet. Oh, for sure. I can see that. Uh, the steaming bean. My cruise dropped $150 five days after I paid in full. Darn. Uh, contact your travel agent and get the difference. Uh, contact the cruise line. Get the difference. Get on the get on the blower there, Steaming Bean. You should be able to get your uh, should be able to get a, de a deal on that. Uh, Ch Charles Jordan, your age, laugh out loud. <laughs> All right, it's time to tell you what I did for what I did. I, I graduated uh, George Brown College, and it was mechanical. I took a, a a two year course with an optional third year, which I did. I took all three years and graduated, and became licensed as a watchmaker. I was a watch repair guy. And the first year, you learn how to repair clocks because they start with the bigger units, and then you work your way down to the pocket watches, and then you work your way down to wristwatches. But the first year, you don't get to touch a wristwatch. You don't get to breathe on a wristwatch. You get to work on clocks. And you start off with cuckoo clocks and mantle clocks and uh, alarm clocks and uh, that type of thing. And, uh, and then in the second year, you start off with stopwatches. Um, and then you, you begin to work on uh, mechanical watches. And uh, then you get to move into smaller and smaller timepieces. But in those days, in 1970, what, four, five, six, or five, six, and seven, we still had to do the kind of work, hand, hand work, that the watchmakers in Switzerland were famous for, which meant we had to make parts for watches. We couldn't just order a, a, a part from the part department and then repair a watch. No, that's how it, that's how it is in the real world, even in 74, but not in our world. Our world, we had to make the part that was broken. <laughs> And so I used, I learned how to use a lathe, a watchmaker's lathe. And uh, we used to make what are called um, balance staffs, staffs, balance staff that held the, the wheel that goes back and forth. When you see a watch, your watch ticking, tick, 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 tick. that's a wheel going back and forth. And uh, we used to make the, the, the little axle that that wheel was housed on. And we had to work within a tolerance of one one hundredth of a millimeter for accuracy and if you were 200 millimeters out three three one hundredths of a millimeter out f you flunked <laughs> and in the other way we were measured for our success or failure of an assignment was the uh, the teacher uh, our instructor would hand us a wristwatch give me a wristwatch everyone would get one and wouldn't tell you what's wrong with it <laughs> it's not working don't know why it isn't working, but it's not working. And he's going, well, this is the real world. People come into your jewelry store, come to the, par the repair department. My watch doesn't work. Fix it. So you get a watch. Now figure out what's wrong with it. So we had to de detect, first of all, what was wrong with the darn thing. And then we had to figure out the repair. And uh, that's how we worked it. Once we did the repair and we got the watch running again, then we had something called a timing machine that the watch would be attached to. And it would measure the accuracy of the watch. Now, as a watchmaker, we could adjust the speed of the balance wheel, faster or slower, but only to a slight degree. And so we already had to be within 97% perfect to be able to adjust the other one or 2% we could get to. If we were 8% out, the watch should be four minutes off a day and at, unacceptable. C can you wear a watch that's four minutes slow every day? That's a half hour a week. That's not going to work. That watch is coming back. So uh, we had to work within 99 to 99.9% .9 accuracy in order to get a passing grade from our instructors. So the second year was wristwatches, chronographs, uh, divers watches, really complicated stuff. And then the third year, we, we moved into the really high-end stuff. And then we started the electronic, learning the electronic watches as well. Quite the uh, course. It taught me patience, <laughs> a lot of patience, because <laughs> it just gets so frustrating. <laughs> a sense of humor. You got to just laugh it off, but you got to water off a duck's back. Uh, and you had to be entrepreneurial because you were looking at a watch going, well, this is going to take me an hour to fix. If it takes me an hour and a half to fix, I'm losing money because I can't charge the customer more because it took me longer to fix the darn watch. So I would have to know, okay, this is a two-hour job. The, the repair is $25 or whatever the price was. 
and that's how I got to know uh, the business. And so that's that is what I uh, did out of college and uh, uh, back in George Brown College. Uh, Mar uh, Michelle Lucas, uh, Jim Thomas, first cruise suggestion. Uh, California Coastal Cruise, very fun. Yeah, go down to Mexico. It's fantastic. Steaming Bean, 60. Steaming Bean says, I think he's 60. Peter Mecca, Heckema, did you get your four newbies on this show? I, I don't know. I'm not sure if I did. Uh, Debbie Emanuel, uh, so do you fix clocks now or just buy new ones when they break? <laughs> uh, I haven't repaired a timepiece in uh, decades. Um, funny enough, I graduated in 77. And I had a job lined up in Calgary, Alberta, all the way in the West. Uh, my girlfriend at the time, uh, Ms. Aniston, she and I moved to Calgary. And um, I had a gig already lined up. And I was working for a firm that repaired clocks and watches for jewelry stores. So the customer would go to the jewelry store with a, with a timepiece that wasn't working. The store would take it in. They would then deliver it to this company that I worked for. And then they would hand out the timepiece to the applicable repair guy. I got the clocks because I was the newbie. So I got all the clocks. No watchmaker. They don't like doing clocks. Get your hands dirty. Two, the pieces are too big. Watches, you can clean a, a watch without touching a part with your fingers. You can use tweezers and screwdrivers and all that. I didn't care. I, I didn't mind doing clocks. No one else is doing it. I had no competition. I worked for them for six months because the customer would bring a clock into the store. The store would charge the customer 50 bucks to fix it. The store would bring the clock to the sh shop that I worked at, and um, the shop would charge the store fifty uh, twenty-five dollars. They would give me the clock, and I'd get twelve fifty. <laughs> so I fixed the clock. I got twelve dollars fifty cents. The customer paid fifty bucks. I thought there's something wrong with this equation. Now I'm not a business major. I didn't go to college for business, but boy, there's something wrong with these mathematics. And I thought, I know. Why don't I just put a classified ad in the newspaper in my town? I get all the tools in my apartment where I live. I could fix clocks in my apartment on the side until I had so much work that I could quit my day job. Oh, and one more thing. If I fixed one clock, I'd get 50 bucks <laughs> instead of 1250, which meant I only had to work as quarter a quarter as hard as I did downtown. Well, 6 months later I quit my job <laughs> and I worked out of my apartment for 2 years. Uh, repairing clocks, a couple watches, uh, but mainly clocks in my apartment in Calgary. And I made more money than I was working at this place over here. Um, and that's how I, how I started off. But I only did it for about two and a half years and then stopped doing it completely and became a stockbroker because that's where the money was. <laughs> I figured that out. I remember that guy in the limo, in the back of the limo, wearing a nice three-piece suit reading the paper, and some guy was driving his car for him. And I thought, well, you know, I don't need a chauffeur. I mean, I, I wouldn't mind a nice car. I'll drive it myself. But I, I wouldn't mind wearing suits and, uh, you know, making, making some coin because I saw stockbrokers in Calgary making some serious money. And that's how it went. By 79, 80, I was a stockbroker. It only took me two years after graduating college. I was already in another profession and went into finance. And that's how I got to the Cayman Islands. Anyway, there you go. Ah, uh, so the Richard Karmaski, damn them, electric watches came out. Uh, Steaming Bean, a watchmaker, pretty cool. Jim Thomas, I will check that out, Michelle. Michelle Lucas, love watches and scotches gathering on Princess. <laughs> so at the Farmer, I'm still on uh, Cruise Channel, right? Laughing out loud, joking. Richard Karmaski, got to shovel snow. See, everybody. Uh, Randy Lucas, me too. The Steaming Bean, forget the snow. Bruce is on a roll. Charlie Baum, hi, Bruce. They charge for things now on Coco K like snorkeling paddle boards and water park things how about that heather young 1398 subscribers on the channel two away from 1400 how about that charles jordan the steaming bean i, I think he's 60 my body will be 66 july 5th of my mind i'm only 25 laughing out loud charles i'm with you i'm 62 i think i'm 17 uh but uh oh <laughs> i used to go roller skating as a kid a teenager uh, from like 16 until I was 20, 21. I used to roller skate every weekend. I miss it terribly. I wish I could still do it. There's no roller rink around here, by the way. If there were, I'd try it, but I don't think I'd last long. Steaming Bean, Bruce now has his face right up to the camera. Yikes. <laughs> Steaming Bean, I'm 50, but feel 35. Yeah, the way, the, the, as grumpy as you are, you sound like you're 80. <laughs> Loving it. Wendy Thompson, Michelle, sale in January. 
uh, will you will see whales. Yes, you will. You'll see whales. Fantastic. Anyway, guys, I'm going to pack it in. I want to thank you for thumbs ups today. I want to thank a couple of you guys, particularly for uh, super chat contributions. Uh, a couple of bucks here, a couple of bucks there. We'll take it. I want to thank the new subscribers to get me to 1398, uh, getting close to 1400. I guess we'll do it tonight. Uh, I want to thank all the comments, uh, all the uh, chatter. Uh, the, the I just love it. Fantastic. I'll see you guys tomorrow, Thursday, at 5 and 8. I'll do two shows tomorrow. And look forward to it. Oh, and the sun just came out. I'm sunny again here in Creston. So we had a little, little cloudy period and came through. It's quite nice. Uh, oh, look at that. Charles Jordan. I worked at a skating rink until I was 28 years old. Laugh out loud. Oh, man, I miss those days. We had the best roller rink uh, where I lived at Kitchener Waterloo. Binghamton Park, for, uh, Saturday nights. We had a band, a live band in the middle of the rink. We skated around the band. It's fantastic. The power plugs were in the ceiling, would come down, and they'd plug in their amplifiers there. We'd have to, we'd have to skate over power cords. And it was fantastic. Saturday night at Binghamton Park. Oh, I miss those days. Debbie Manuel, great show again. See you, everyone, again tomorrow. Toodle, see you, Debbie. Pamela Jordan, good night, all. See you next time. Jim Thomas, good show. See you, De Jim Thomas. Thanks for coming by. Everybody, I had a, I'm a roller skater. Michelle saying I'm a roller skater. You see, we, we, we all find ourselves, don't we? It's amazing. Interesting, uh, interesting uh, uh, likes. Thanks for joining me today. This is Bruce with Traveling with Bruce saying good night for now. We'll see you guys tomorrow at 5 for the first show. And if you dare, I'll see you for the late show at 8 o'clock tomorrow night too. Take care for now all. See you later. Bye-bye.